Well, thank you to those of you who are interested in ethics. Thank you very much for coming out to our talk. Much appreciated. So oh, I bet you're wondering why we want to talk about ethics. And um, so I've, as you know, I've, you've heard, I've been in the technology space and building developer programs for a lot of years. I've been building, building communities for well over 20 years. I've been building developer programs for, uh, my company is 14 years old. And I feel guilty. I really do. In the early days, I used to put on events for, this was like pre-iPhone days, and we were talking, we were, I was putting on events for developers about how do we make apps more sticky? Well, guess what? We did that, <laughs> and now you go around the dinner table and nobody talks to each other. And I'm feeling really, really guilty about that. And when I, when I looked around at, uh, you know, what else I could do in this community, it's like, I really want to start talking about, about ethics and how we can be more thoughtful in the technology we produce. And I'll talk a little bit more about how we can sort of bring that around to developer relations. So the first thing I like to talk about is when we're talking about developers and developer relations, it's like, what, what drives developers? And really what it is, is that it's pride. You know, and again, in a really good way. It's the ability to go, I made that. Like, how, have you seen how cool that is? I made that. That's really what drives us to, uh, to build things and to keep growing. It's, it's pride in being able to say you did something that was really wonderful. So if that's driving us, and if we're thinking about ethics, but if we're not thinking thoughtfully about what we're building, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Now, I mean, these are some really serious issues. So, you know, the one I talked about where, you know, you're, you're, at a, you're with a family and nobody talks to each other is one of them. You know, it's a huge issue in our society right now. But, you know, the Volkswagen problem that happened, with, there's a ton of fraud that's in the industry. What about the superhuman male application that was out there that was spying on people, let alone all the other pieces that are spying on folks right now? What about the Mac 737? Somebody had to know about that and never really spoke up about it, right? And those are all issues that happen when we're not being thoughtful or thinking about ethics in what we're building. And then it becomes, oh crap, you know, I made that. I'm, I'm part of that responsibility. Or for those of us in DevRel, it's like, holy crap, they made that with our tools, you know? How does that make you feel? That's when it starts to become really personal. It's like, so, you know, what do we do about it? And I think anytime there's an issue, you always have to take a look at what the root cause is. And there's a number of different root causes for not tech not being thoughtful and ethics not being followed. Here's a couple of things that have come out just in, in, um, in the news lately. You know, there's a lot of complex undertakings. Pro a lot of projects are getting more complex. Um, this one was about Boeing 737. It's like, you know, what combination of uh, inexperience and, you know, ego and lack of cultural understanding. Um, always wanting to release products, right? There's always some shareholder going, I want my shares to go up this next quarter, so you guys better hurry up and put something out there. And a lot of little self-control. There's a number of other things, too, and I often ask this question when I give talks. Is, you know, do you think coding is easier today or is it harder today? In a lot of ways, it's a lot easier today because we've got a lot of great tools out there. There's a lot of ab abstracted code, so you know, things are easier to learn. Uh, there's communities, there's evangelists, there's developer relations. But I argue, too, that I think coding is a lot harder today for exactly those same reasons, because there's more tools, there's more competition. Projects are rushed to get finished. The expectation of time to market has shrunk a lot, and there's more choice. So I would argue coding is actually harder today than it was for just those reasons. A couple other things when we look at causation and root cause is developers as a whole, and even DevRel as a whole, tends to be quite immature, um, lack of experience. If you take a look at, I mean, these are some of the survey results that came from Stack Overflow. You know, one third learned to code in the last nine years, and a lot of them don't have a lot of business experience either. So there's a lack of context and a lack of just knowing how to interact within a, especially within a big corporate environment. Um, this was a particular survey that Stack Overflow did in 2018 when they asked about ethics. 
And you won't be able to read this, but you can see the slides later on. But overall, what really what was summed up was developers, there was over 73 or 70, 79%, it's almost 80% of developers that believe they have an obligation to think about ethics in the code that they deliver. However, when they were asked about, so how would you report on this? And you know, what would you actually do? Most don't know how to report it and they don't know how to handle it. But there was an interesting quote that came out of there that said, developers can actually be the last line of defense against unethical code. Wow. Okay. So we've, we've got an understanding of what some of this root cause is, which is inexperience, unreasonable deadlines, shareholder ex, un, you know, unreasonable shareholder expectations, incomplete information often, whether it's about the project that you're building within projects or else are all, you know, we don't often know what the executive is thinking. The incomplete information doesn't get drilled down and really a culture lacking in psychological safety, you know, feeling very uncomfortable to speak up. Okay, we got that. We got what the root causes and what some of the things are. What can we do about it? And when we think about, when I think about developer relations and why I want to bring this, this issue to you is, we know that one of the biggest um, characteristics of being good in DevRel is empathy. So I think we bring empathy to the table, right? We are also a group that's often known to bring issues, you know, we're, we're a group that sits in the middle of everything and talks to everybody. So we're in a good position to be able to bring some of those issues forward. Um, so how do we do it? Well, let's just put up a, you know, something on our site that says, I agree to do no harm. Is that going to make, you know, is that going to make a big issue? You know, some people <laughs> will go, yeah, I'm going to sign this. You know, it's like our code of conduct. It's great to have code of conduct, but there's other things that need to be doing, that we need to be doing too, so we're actually living this. Um, we know, we've all heard probably what's happened with GitHub the last little while, right? We can go and protest. And great there's, great, there's great people, like Don, thank you for actually leaving his job in protest. We, we can do that too. Um, you know, here is something that came out from an IEEE um, news site where a technologist was asking, would you actually quit a tech project over ethical concerns? So I'm really pleased that these issues are coming out and people are starting to talk about them and some people would quit, you know? Um, there's an organization in Silicon Valley that's, um, made up of some of the folks that have come out of Facebook and Google that are going, holy crap, they feel guilty like me, right? Like, we created some of these monsters. Um, they've actually started to put in place some design guidelines for applications, which I think is really cool. So go and check it out, where there's a whole guidelines on, um, you know, here's what can happen if you're, you're, you know, you should look through some of these de design guidelines when you're creating applications to, again, be really thoughtful about what you're doing, because it can cause issues like addiction, et cetera. A lot of it also comes down to culture. And uh, for those of you who follow Ben Horowitz, he's uh, one of the Big Valley um, uh, venture capitalists and also has written a couple books. But he's re recently written a book on culture. But it's a lot of what we already know. So culture is not always, it's not created by top down and, you know, here's what our culture is. It's written on the walls and everybody follows it. Culture is really about what happens every day, day to day in business. And culture can change from the bottom up. So it's, you know, so that's important to know that you and the people in your organization can make those changes in culture by what you do. At the end of the day, somebody needs to speak up. <laughs> somebody needs to feel comfortable enough to speak up and talk about what these issues are and say it's not right. So at this point, what I'm going to do is turn it over to my good friend, Adelina, uh, who's known as the geek whisperer, who really helps a lot of companies talk about this psychological safety. And uh, she's going to give you a few tips on how you can make a difference in your own organization. Adelina. <laughs> Thank you. Well, someone still needs to be able ten to stand up and say, no, this is not OK. This is not going to work. But in order to do that with the community of developers we have, you have to be able to do it internally with your engineers and leadership. Carolyn mentioned things like tight deadlines, lack of experience, 
and psychological safety as some of the issues that contributed to Max 737 or the superhuman email tracker or Volkswagen and their, their fraud. But what is psychological safety? It's one of the, if, if you're in a meeting with your boss and you worry about reprisal for speaking your mind or telling them this is not okay, this is not ethical, then it means you don't have psychological safety within your team or with your boss or with your peers. If, however, you know you can have constructive disagreement, then you can say freely, I was wrong, you are right. I made a mistake last week. This is not okay what we're doing right here. And you know your career is not in jeopardy. You won't be shunned by colleagues or bosses because you spoke up. But if psychological safety is a feeling of trust that you can disagree with people without repercussions, how can you create in other people? One of the key ways that you can create psychological safety with your colleagues is for you to start doing it yourself, even if leadership aren't doing it yet. Carolyn was talking about culture is what people do day in, day out. And yes, it's often hard to change the culture from the bottom up. Here's a very simple way you can create psychological safety with your own family, friends, and colleagues at work. If someone says to you something you don't want to hear or something with which you disagree or something that you don't, they don't like about you, Mary, you're difficult to work with. Most people, in fact, from experience, because I've done this lots of times and I'm speaking all of it from experience, 99% of people react either by saying, well, you're no piece, cheese, cheesecake to work with either. <laughs> you're very difficult too. That's one reaction, which is actually a defense. Or they start going, what do you mean? This is not right. You are rubbish. You're rubbish. You're bad. And then they start trying to run away from the problem and deflect to something different. This is because it's a biological reaction. It's a normal reaction to defend ourselves. However, this is the reason why people don't raise their hand and say, this is not right, because they're worried about the reaction of the bosses and the colleagues and everyone else. And one of the key ways you can change that yourself within your own team, within the developer community you work with, is the moment someone says something you don't want to hear, or even if they bring a personal attack, instead of defending or having a fight reaction, become curious about what is it, the depth of that feedback. Where do they come from with this? What's going on there? If I were to summarize this concept in a very, very cliche and annoying slide type of presentation, I would say that you would genuinely say, thank you so much for telling us we suck. <laughs> but not in a cynical way, but in a, oh gosh, OK, thank you for coming out with this, because I realize this was very difficult for you. And then you will see and then become curious about what is it that made them say that. Delve into the details. How did we suck? When did we suck? How much did we suck? What was the suckiest part of it all? And then you will see people start feeling, wow, it really is OK to say what I think about around here. So if I were to summarize this tiny little thing you can do in your day to day is that become grateful the moment someone says something you don't like and overtly grateful by saying, thank you for raising this. It must have been very hard for you to tell me that I suck. And then become curious about the details and say to them, especially when they tell you something you don't like or do you want to hear, you don't want to hear, or when they bring up problems and errors that they committed. Nobody wants to be the guy or gal who shouted at in the, in the office because you brought that issue. Everybody else knows about and talks about around the water cooler, but nobody would tell Martin about it. Martin is not a real problem person, by the way, as far as I know. Not in my world. But then there's another aspect to, to psychological safety. And this aspect is this. A company or people have to listen to understand. A classic example of this 
came from GitHub. In the last few months, they were, um, they were in the media because they renewed a $200,000 contract with immigration and cust customs enforcement with the United, Na United States. ICE, as they're known, are known for perpetrating certain human rights um, violations, but also, as GitHub engineers put it, putting children in cages. GitHub engineers asked GitHub leadership to cancel the $200,000 contract. GitHub leadership thought and said, well, we care about the same issues you care. And to show that, we're not going to cancel the contract, but we're going to give $500,000 to NGOs that help the immigrants that ICE is affecting. If GitHub leadership had really taken the time to engage in meaningful listening to understand conversation with the staff, perhaps they would have discovered now they are almost a million out of, out of pocket because this is a lot more money than what they're receiving from ICE, plus several staff who have left the company, plus the bad publicity, plus they didn't actually manage to make the engineers happy. In fact, the engineers said, you can't offset human lives with money. And also, the engineers were even more upset because they said, no donation can offset the damage or the harm that ICE is perpetrating with our labor. And that's core. Like Caroline said earlier, engineers and developers didn't want the tools they created to be used to harm human beings. So a key part of psychological safety is being able to listen to understand, not just listen to respond. Understanding takes a willingness and curiosity to get in the shoes of the other person who's trying to tell you something. Having an answer does not mean you understood. So one of the other ways that within a company, leadership can build psychological safety is to be overt and happy to talk about times when they failed and times when they were wrong. You yourself can do this with your developer teams or with the people that you work with every day. If you're the first person who goes, I'm wrong, I'm the person who did that. I was wrong last week, you were right. People go, oh my god, this seems to be OK, and this, this seems to be all right. I don't have to be right all the time. And part of the reason people, I think, often feel that they have to show that they're right, or they have to show they always have an answer, is because in school, if you think about it, you were shunned by the teacher and the students and laughed at if you got the answer wrong, and even plastered with a bad grade afterwards. When Carolyn asked me, to give this talk, I was trying to think as an objective observer of DevRel and what role could DevRel do and have to be the last line of defense before unethical tech goes out there into the world. And I was thinking, for developers and engineers, DevRel could be a safe channel to leadership. Think of it this way. If some engineers at GitHub didn't feel safe within their departments to speak up, DevRel could have gathered all of those numbers and all of that feedback. And also DevRel, in fact, did gather numbers and signatures, as far as I know, uh, because recently, just last week, there was an article in the paper that they, um, those 300 signatures from the DevRel community to the leadership at GitHub to reinforce the fact that they do want this ICE contract canceled. And now, I'd like to go back to Carolyn and see if she has an important question to ask you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Adelita. Um, so what we wanted to do again was bring up the issues of ethics and uh, you know, help, you, help you start to be thoughtful about what you do and to see if there's a way again that we can bring it into DevRel. And what Adelina was saying, it really starts at home. 
right? You've got to be able to practice it and walk the walk first before you can support it in other places and in other organizations. And we, when we looked um, as well at what you know, DevRel can do, what you, you, know, you can do within your organization, it really comes down to how can, we empower the, how can we empower our own teams and how can we empower the developers that we work with. So there is an opportunity to provide information like this, to provide training um, and guidelines like uh, the humane, uh, in humane Society, the Humane Technology Group is, is doing with those design guidelines. So you know, maybe collectively we can come up with some great questions that we say, you know, before you go and, and create this tool, this experience, this piece of software, ask these questions, you know? So maybe collectively, again, we don't have all the answers. We're kind of here to pose some more questions. Um, there's definitely some personal communication techniques that we can all learn, um, some of what uh, Adelina has been, been telling us about. And I think if we as a community come at it going, we strongly want ethics in the work that we do and, and, as a, and we form that strong community and you form those strong communities in what you have, I think we believe um, that if somebody wants to be that whistleblower, at least feel comfortable, they know that a community has their back, yeah. that there's going to be other people that go on, yeah, we, we believe in ethics too. And there's certainly more and more of this growing within our tech community um, where there are more protests than the, you know, whether they're internal or external. So I believe this has already started. I believe we just need to embrace it. I think there's still techniques that we need to do and think about for ourselves and within our own, own organizations. And I think we need to believe in, you know, the future depends on our choices. And we've got that empathy. So, you know, unless you want your heart to fly away, pull it back, you know, pull it back and keep it here. And let's work together to be much more ethical in the software that we promote and with our tools that are being used. If you want to get a hold of us, I'm Carolyn. This is Adelina. We'd love to spend more time talking about it, and maybe there's some sort of group that uh, we can form, and um, maybe there's some more Twitter conversations, or, or later on today, I know there's some um, sort of bar camp style. If you're interested in talking about this a little more, we would love, we would love to do that. So go forth and uh, be thoughtful about the technology in our community. Thank you.